Good morning, folks. How you doing this morning? You are listening to New Hunter Church of Christ. We are located in Mechanicsville, Virginia. And uh, we are right off of Coal Harbor Road. And we need your support and help. And if you can help us, we would definitely appreciate that. So, if you can, thank you for those who are. Today we're going to be talking about, in a title, it's called The Role of Man in the Home. It means as a father figure and also as a husband to his wife. So we're going to talk about that, but before we do, let's pray, shall we? Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for what you bestow on us. Help people to be led to give. Help them to be able to have a heart to help to minister and to help to share in that way. If they can't help in other ways, they can give financially and monetarily, Lord. They can give of their time. They can give of their resources. They can give of their leadership. They can give by coming as being a member. They can come by telling people about this channel and also telling people about New Hunter Church of Christ in Mechanicsville, Virginia, and letting people know as that we're a church and we're new to the body of Christ and that we do need your, that we do need help and support and that they can send gifts and donations to us. If you don't come to us and you watch us online, please prayerfully consider to give us a donation monetarily. We really do need it. There's a lot of bills, like I said, if you know. A lot of churches have bills. Well, even ones that are out of home still have a lot of bills. And the bills aren't bills that are mine that are from other things. They're all from this church. They're all for putting it online. They're all for new equipment. And those are things that are needed here to continue to do this ministry. So if you can help us out in that way with a monetary gift and donation, please help us. And if more and more people gave, like somebody said, I wouldn't have to ask for support every week or drum up support or beg, as they said, which I'm not begging. But if they knew and had a very understanding of more how churches are run and how they are lead, led, they would not make those kind of presumptions or have those kind of snarling marks to say remarks because they don't really understand how churches work because they all ask for support and donations you know, through various programs and things. So all I'm asking you is I'm just coming to the point, cut through all the chase, and just asking you if you can help. Prayerfully, Lord, help people be led to help us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Please bless the message and bless the people and the hearers this morning. Thank you for everything you do. And Jesus, in your wonderful name, amen. This morning we're going to talk about, as I said, the role of man in the home as being both a father figure as well as being a husband to his wife. And it kind of coalesces with and fits in with our series that we're doing every Wednesday night on Romans 13, which is coined from both Timothy and and Chuck Baldwin, uh, the perfect submission and what the role is of submission. And basically, you know, it's just the way it works out in this theory of truth and reason, volume four. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I didn't plan it this way. It's just the way God divinely let, rolls things out. Okay? So let's talk about these things. Let me give you some supplementals first. You know, when we, you know, a lot of times why there's a lot of crime in society it's because homes are absence of a male role figure or model the reason why there's a lot of crime in society or why there's broken homes is because there's the absence of a husband or a male role figure working and molding and shaping your children it's so important folks to have a male role model or figure in your home today i can't stress that to you anymore as a minister and, you know, that will cause crime to go down. The government doesn't want you to know that, though. They want you to try to raise your children yourself and stay on welfare and stay dependent. Well, God says he doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to break free of that. He wants you to go get a job. He wants you to work. He wants you to raise that money so you can be blessed and God will help you through other opportunities and lead you to those other opportunities. But you can't have those other opportunities if you're sitting at home and not going to church or going somewhere by being involved. The Bible also tells us in Matthew that we're not supposed to forsake the assembly. What does that mean? It means you need to physically go to a real building. You know, the building doesn't really mean anything. Like Jesus always said, what really makes up the nuts and bolts of the church or the stones of that church foundation is the, its members, the people. 
Well, I need members here. I need real bodied, embodied people here to work with me, to help me, to share, to donate their time and resources, you know, to do this. All churches need this. All churches start, started off like I'm starting off, out of a home. And then we grow into a building. But that takes time. And with people to help in that vision and all people sharing in that vision, that's how that can really happen. And it will happen. But it can't happen by just chance or magically that people are just going to know to give without asking for it. Because apparently people don't have a good understanding about that. Because when you give, you have to ask for it. And you have to get it in different ways so people will give. You just have to spell things out to people. Otherwise, people will just watch a message and not even help. So please consider us as prayerfully as one of your sources of donations of support to our ministry. Thanks a lot for those who are. And God bless those who are. So anyway, the role of a husband as a man and, as, and also as a father to his children at home. Now let's look at some, inter, let's talk about some introduction things to think about when we get on the message board. It says, in the time of creation, God saw that it was not good for a man to be alone. So he then created a woman and provided for that marriage a relationship. The beginning of the home in which children would be born and also be raised in. That's found in Genesis 2, verses 18 through 24. God also has given guidelines to govern our conduct in the physical family just as he has for the spiritual family which is our church or the church it says each person is to study the Word of God to know his or her own role in the physical family uh, whether as husband wife parent or child secondly as Christ is the head of the church, as in Ephesians 1, 22, I mean, Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23, and Ephesians 5, 23, he is to be the head of every physical family. Thus, he will and should guide them in all things and all situations. In this lesson, we will then focus our attention on the very role of man in the family as a husband and as a father to his children. Let's first look at the role of man as a husband to his wife. He is to have, he is to actually, sorry, leave his father and mother, which is recorded in Matthew 19 verses 5 through 6, says leaving that relationship in favor of another has many implications that come along with it and responsibilities. He leaves the headship of his parents to become the head of his own family or household. He leaves for financial support of his parents, the financial support of his parents, to provide for himself and his very own family or household. He is to cleave, which is in the, is in the New King James Version, or to be joined to his wife that's in Matthew chapter 19 verses 5 through 6 also said his wife is to be his highest earthly loyalty and he is to live for her and to think of her and to please her before his own parents that's what the man is supposed to do now what does the word cleave literally mean or what did it, it meant it means cemented glued or here to and Acts it says it's that's found in Acts 11 verse 23 it also says God has joined husband and wife together where nothing can separate now let's look at these things of this reunion of this joint relationship between the man and the woman they are to become one flesh okay secondly the godly husband sticks with his wife in and through all things in sickness and health, richer or poor, bitter or sweet, prosperity, you know, or calamity. Better or worse, like I said, kind of ahead of myself. Uh, but he is to be the head of his wife. That's Ephesians 5, 
verse 23. It also tells us here that proper leadership is needed in every family. Therefore, the husband must live up to his God-given responsibilities. He is to be the head of his wife as Christ is the very head of the church. Okay, A, his headship should be exercised in love, humility, and with consideration and understanding of his wife and her very needs before himself and his own needs. So she should put his her needs first. He is neither to be a tyrant over his wife or a dictator over his wife. Not to beat her into submission, but to love her and to cherish her. You know, his life is not to be his slave. And the wife is not to be his slave, okay? Or bow or scrap, you know, where you can do whatever you want before him. That's not what it says. Uh, it says he is to honor his wife. It's found in 1 Peter 3, verse 7. It says many wives are profane, treated as common, and are taken often for granted. So that's something we need to think about this morning. If you're in the, you're kind of guy that's been raised in sort of like a controlling household, or you feel like you got to get the last word, or you think that you're, that you are lordship over your wife, you got to get that idea out of your head, folks. Because we are not lordship over our lot over our wives, and our wives aren't lordship, but the wives that are lordship over our husbands this morning, and they also need to get that out of their head, according to the Bible. Because we are here to help and to serve one another. When we make decisions as a family, a man is the one that does make the decision ultimately, but the wife has a stake in it too. The wife can talk to the husband, and the wife can and the husband can talk to the wife, but they both make the decisions for the family, the children, for themselves, and their livelihood, and the household together. That's what Jesus said. Not the way it is, the way it's been painted today, where you just do what I say, no matter what. You know, that's what we've learned from Romans 13. But anyway, you know, here, here's a little, here's some more uh, things that, you know, go along with it. Peter gives us instruction that suggests respect, esteem and you know treatment expressive of proper honor in both word and also in deed now how different this attitude is than that of which was normally expressed you know towards the woman in society of biblical days now let's look at some of these ways how how they were treated and it wasn't very good but, you know, this is before the New Testament came about. And, of course, there may be people in this church or even out here in the community where they're being treated that way by their husbands or a woman's treating their husband this way. So this can go both ways here. So if you're doing this, you need to stop by getting seeking counseling. But you don't want to treat your husband or your wife this way. Okay? So listen. It says, in every sphere of ancient civilization, women had no rights at all. You know? who were under the Jewish law, a woman was a thing. She was often owned by her husband uh, in exactly the same way as, his, as he owned his very own sheep and his goats. On no account uh, could she leave him, ever leave him, although he could dismiss her at any moment. In the Greek civilization, the very duty of a woman was to remain indoors and to be obedient unto her husband. It was the very sign of a good woman that should or must see as little, hear as little, and ask as little questions as possible. She had no kind, in other words, no kind of independence or independent existence at all, and no kind of mind for her own. And her husband you know, could divorce her almost at kept price, which means at any, you know, for no reason. Uh, so long as, as, so long as he returned her dowry note. Okay, now it says, under the Roman law, a woman had no rights at all. 
in law she remained forever a child. When she was under her father's care, she was under the Petra or the Petras, okay, the father's power, in other words, which gave the father, you know, even the right of life or death over that child or over her, according to Roman law. And and when she married, she would pass equally into the power then of her husband. She was entirely subject to her husband and completely at his mercy and beck and call. Now, Cato, the censor, the typical ancient Roman wrote, if you were to catch your wife in an act of infidelity, you could then kill her with impunity and you escape without being punished for murdering your wife. In Roman, you know, Cattell wrote, says, without a trial even. He says, the whole attitude of ancient civilization was that no, no women could dare to even take or make any decisions for her very own. You know, this is W.N. Barclay. This comes from the Daily Study Bible, or the letters from the letters of Peter, pages 258 through 259. The Greek, let's look at the lot of women in non-Greek uh, countries, particularly, uh, particularly before the influences of the Gospels began to be felt or to take hold, was a deplorable one. It says Aristotle writes these writes this that among the barbarians non-greek women and slaves um, all held the same rank and through and among the greeks her position was not quite so uh, degraded they considered her as holding only an intermediate position you see between free persons and slaves, mother of her children, but not worthy enough to educate them, you know, qualified enough to receive orders, but never, she was qualified enough, I meant to receive orders, but never to give them herself. Okay, isn't that awful? This comes from the Gospel Advocate Commentaries, Commentary on First Peter, page 86, if you want to look that up. All right, she is to be honored. Let's look at that with point number four. It says, as the weaker vessel, through some, some, through, though some believe this also has reference to the physical weakness of the woman in comparison to the man, you know, uh, which here's a better explanation, is that she is to be honored as a piece of fine china rather than just everyday stoneware okay uh, because she is a follower she is a fellow heir that's what I meant to say of the grace of life you know so that one's prayers may not be hindered okay because she has you know, honored her husband at all the men to whom she could have chosen to give herself totally to and her life. She chose her husband instead. This is a, that's something to think about, you know. You don't treat your wife like second-hand garbage. You treat her like something precious, like a ruby. She is a ruby. She's a diamond and, she's a diamond and rub, but she's a ruby and you, she's a beauty. Take care of her. Husbands, wives, you do the same unto your husband. All right, he is to dwell with this. He is to dwell with his wife with the under with understanding. That's found in First Peter verse three, chapter three, verse seven. Sorry, a husband may never be able to completely understand his wife and her way or ways of thinking. That is not what's 
commanded here. Do you, under, do you understand that? Because you're never going to understand that, but that's not what's being commanded here. Now, what is, what is here is the understanding the husband must have is that of marriage and the relationship and his God-given responsibilities towards his wife in that very relationship. Okay? Now, this is what this is what uh, Jin Jin Sosko signifies to be taking in knowledge to come to know, recognize to understand, or to understand completely. This is W. E. Vine. Okay, this is Expository Dictionary of the New Testament Words, page six thirty seven. Says with an in, with an intelligent recognition of the very nature of the marriage relation uh, Marvin R. Vinson word studies in the New Testament volume 1 page 651 he is to provide for the very needs of his wife you know physical needs that's in 1 Timothy verse 5 chapter 5 verse 8 her sexual needs 1 Corinthians 7 verses 1 through 4 emotional needs uh, means the godly husband understands the link between the emotional and sexual and will see that the emotional needs of his wife are then satisfied. Okay, Intellectual needs, he will engage in conversation with her and also provide opportunities for her towards her development for, I mean, for her intellectual abilities. Okay, five, her spiritual needs. Okay, as a joint heir of the grace of life, First Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 7 is where that's found. Nothing better uh, complements the very efforts of a wife trying to serve the Lord God along than, than having a faithful husband who is doing the very same thing alongside her. Isn't that something? Now he is to truly love his wife. Says so such a love is is the summation of all husbands should and must do. Okay? The the husband's love for his wife when compared in Ephesians 5 to Christ's love for the church shows it is to be the following. A sacrificial love as Christ loved the church. Verse 25. All right. This is a premium. That means as their own bodies. In Acts, I mean in verse 28. Truly caring even as himself. In verse 33. Okay. Now we're going to look at the third point. A second point is the role of man as a father to his children. A man who is a father to provide for love teach and to chasten his own children this is this is, means provide first timothy 5 verse 8 we also see teach as a part of that it says to see that his children develop in all the areas in which jesus developed wisdom stature favor with men and also with god is found in luke chapter 2 verse 52 we also see so that his children will be brought up in the very in training and in admonishing of the Lord. It's in Ephesians 6 verse 4. So that his children will have a solid foundation in which to build their very lives. That's found in Proverbs 22 verse 6. Now... We're almost done, but let's go over the third point. Chasten, that means follow the very example of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 7 talks about that. It says, the father who loves his own children disciplines them promptly. Proverbs 13, verse 24, he is not to withhold correction from them. Proverbs 23, verse 13, he is to chasten his children to properly mold them and preserve them, okay, from the very destruction. Proverbs 19, verse 18. The man is to be the spiritual leader in the home. That's Ephesians 5, verse 23, and Ephesians 6, 4. 
the following examples of Joshua in Joshua 24 verse 15 the following examples of Cornelius in Acts 10 2 this is a must for one who would serve as a leader of God's people in 1 Timothy 3 5 it says he he did with Eli God will judge all those who re, who reject or uh, neglect this or his or this responsibility that's found in first Samuel 3 verse 13 in conclusion I would like you to think about these three things that I want to say to you this morning before we leave but we're going to do communion first okay so don't go anywhere yet it says when husbands fail to honor their wives joyfully live with them and to cleave to them what they are really doing is endangering the most very fundamental and immediate relationship you know in God's design for all mankind that's in first Peter 3 verse 7 Ecclesiastics 9 9 Matthew 19 verse 5 that's a uh, first Peter 3 7 Ecclesiastics 9 verse 9 Matthew 19 verse 5 you want to write those down Wait a second here. When fathers neglect to fulfill their responsibilities to their to their children, they have neglected a sacred responsibility that can have eternal consequences. So that's something to really think about. You know, because it can. You don't do those things; it will happen. The word "man" suggests an essential quality of a husband and father. Um, he must be brave and be courageous if he can be called manly. All right. Secondly, he must be ready for life's adversaries and and all the problems that come along with <coughs> being a husband and father, and not face them without you know without sur giving in or surrendering or even despondency. So he needs to be able to face all those things without giving in or following the crowd or just doing what people order him to do without thinking about it and think about it with common sense. All right, he must be ready for sickness, tragedies, and losses and meet them with, you know, head on, with confidence. All right, he is, or if he will act as a man, he will be rewarded with a loving family in this life and also with eternal blessings in the life that is yet to come in the future so think about this morning dear lord thank you for this wonderful day thank you for the people that listen to us and people that support us please help more people that will i hope this will help people to impact and bless their lives this morning and that they'll be able to see the message of you ultimately through this not just me and think about just the money that I need because it's not the money I need. It's really what I need to help provide for my livelihood. And it's why I do this to help. It's a job. It's a ministry. And I really do need help. And I get really discouraged, Lord. So help people really see that and have a heart to really want to help if they're able to, Lord, this morning. Jesus, may I pray, amen. Let's go into the emblems here this morning. Got the communion here. I got to find the bread. Where is the bread? There it is. Okay. So. This is a bread. It's what we use. It's like a un yeast leaven wafer. It's like a little cracker. That's all this is. And then this is grape juice. I got a big glass for emphasis so you can see it. Yeah. But the first thing we're going to talk about is the bread. They're at the headquarters in Capernaum. They ate supper a week before Jesus was then portrayed by Judas Iscariot. And Jesus broke bread, gave it out, passed it out to the disciples. He says, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. So they took it, they took it, passed it around, and they took it. So let's partake it, shall we? In like manner has to do with the bread. They took the blood, which is symbolic. It's not real blood. But this is his power and glory, and it's with us. Presence is the bread. This is power and glory that is with us in the promise. 
and he will come back to get us and resurrect our bodies one day we will go and rejoin him in the clouds and go to heaven where our home eternally really is but until then we'll be in paradise but the promise still exists because of his death his burial and resurrection now as he took this and he passed it around everybody has their own communion cup so let's do this now or take this now as they did back then as a remembrance and in remembrance of what the Lord has done for us let's do this thank you Lord for everything thank you for the time we got to spend together thank you I hope it helps some people and I hope it changes some people's lives help us to go out here and fight the devil any way we can and not to do it by ourselves we need help because we may not know something but we can go to other people that can help us to be an adversary for good for your cause and please help those that are out on the road helping to get to wherever they're going safely today as they go out to their churches and go out to their meetings and other meetings that they go to later on today help them to have a message of service and servitude to go and serve to other people lord thank you for everything that you do in your wonderful name power and glory i pray to jesus amen See you next week. And remember, to help us, the address will be in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. So that's why it's there, to donate. Directions to get here. If you want to call me to talk to me or you need directions to get here on Wednesday night or to get here tonight even for our 7 o'clock service. What we're dealing with, what we're going to be talking about, yes, we're going to be talking about this book. To keep or not to keep. Why Christians Should Keep Their Guns by, by um, Timothy and Chuck Baldwin. So please come for that tonight at 7 o'clock. See you here. Okay? I love you. And I'll see you tonight. Bye for now and take care. Thanks to those who are helping us out. God bless.